We are building an action plan for media in 2018, and this week we're going to be talking about training. We are. So why is training important? What is it? Um, well, media is changing, and yeah. more and more brands are taking responsibility for media further in-house. And yeah. with that comes the responsibility of improving capabilities and competencies around media to make sure that you get the most of your media investment. Yeah, indeed. Because they're taking control. Yeah. As marketers take more control, they need new skills. That's right. Uh, so you've got to be investing in training. Uh, we know it's important because, I mean, as you know, we conduct, conduct a lot of research uh, each year into uh, marketers' kind of ambitions and sentiment. And when we did some research on training last year, overwhelming majority, 95% of marketing respondents said that uh, good training in media will be a competitive advantage in marketing. That's right, and that's supported by the WFA reports that indicate that 70% of their members have centers of excellence that are accountable and responsible for driving and improving capability uh, within their organizations. Yeah, it's good to see. Okay, so let's build an action plan for training. Right, so when we're building an action plan, uh, you might have seen in previous episodes that we break that down to help you understand what you might want to be doing now, next, and in the future. Uh, if you click the link below this video, you'll find that you can download a free worksheet which goes into a bit more detail and you can kind of follow along. Uh, so where do we go uh, now in terms of training? Where do we start? I think there are three things. The first thing is to have an understanding of what your uh, direction of travel is from a media perspective. Okay? Yeah. What are your changing requirements for media? Have yeah. a point of view on that. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is understand what your current strengths and weaknesses are from your existing media capabilities internally. Yeah. Yeah. And then have a view as to where your current training capabilities are. I mean, yeah. some organizations have very comprehensive uh, training programs. Some have yeah. internal universities, yeah. others, others don't. So understand what you can leverage from your internal training programs, perhaps, to enable you to get better within your uh, existing capabilities yeah. and competencies. And we're, and we're seeing a lot of businesses, aren't we, in the last kind of few years, you know, really start to identify where those training gaps yeah. are. And you know, you, there's lots, been lots of talk around you know, in housing of media and building up analytics and data mm. and programmatic capabilities. We've seen a lot of that. So that's a training investment you yeah. need to make. Uh, not just hire it in, but train, train your existing people to be better. So next, what should, uh, what should a company do? Yeah, uh, well, you, you might have heard that a brilliant quote. I don't know who came up with it, but it said, you know, what's worse than training people and they leave? And the answer is not training people and they stay. Yeah. And in media, that is uh, kind of paralysis and l complete loss of competitive advantage. So training has to be considered an investment in the future. It's an investment in growth. Yeah. Um, and so therefore, once you've understood at the beginning, uh, maybe where the gaps are, you've got to develop the training needs and identify training needs and importantly, secure the investment required. Um, so just identifying the problem is not enough. You need a mandate from the business that this is important and that it's going to be properly funded, good quality training. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that goes with that thing to do next is actually identify places where you may be able to access training for free. There are so many resources available to marketers. Um, if you're a member of any of the great trade associations, so the WFA, ANA, ISBAR, many others around the world, um, you know, they have huge depths of resources available to you. Uh, your agencies, your agency roster, all produce kind of thought leadership and, uh, and will, will deliver training if you ask them to. Um, and there's many, many other sources. We give away a lot, a lot of a huge amount of content. Um, you might have seen last week we launched a free webinar series, uh, which is looking all about media transparency. Uh, again, we'll link to that again down below. So if you haven't seen that, uh, please sign up. That's free uh, and there's a lot you can learn. Okay, so finally, uh, future, long term, what should yeah. we be thinking about training? And this is really important, I think. This is about establishing a culture of continuous improvement, incremental yeah. improvement in media capability and therefore kind of media delivery. And that's, yeah. a, that's a kind of philosophical but a cultural aspect of any organization. And yeah. sort of media leaders really need to sort of champion that. Um, and you know, the other thing that, that should also be considered is in every renegotiation that you have, whether that's with an agency or a tech partner or a media provider, yeah. is negotiate some media training yeah. as part of that, kind yeah. of added value. That's really important. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so uh, commit to media action in 2018. Uh, let's make media better. Please let us know how you get on.
Right, good week four. Assembly, which is a US-based media agency, part of MDC Group. Yep. Uh, they have been awarded Ad Age Media Agency of the Year, mm -hmm. 2018, and which was a fantastic achievement. This is an agency that's only been around for, I think, four years. Um, and it beat all the, the big agencies in the US. Yep. Uh, it had a fantastic year last year in terms of new business, but it also uh, championed a, a, a massively vocal transparency agenda yeah. um, under the kind of stewardship of its CEO, Martin Katz. Because Martin was as well a member. I mean, those of you that have watched the, the interview that I did with uh, Professor Mark Ritson, yeah. we were responding to Martin having appeared on stage at Adweek right, last week, where he kind of laid out his transparency agenda yeah. for, the, for the agency. But, it, but it, he doesn't just talk about it. And, he, and I think what was so impressive is that he's actually acted upon it. Um, yeah. Uh, most notably, he's partnered up with a, an ad tech company called Adfin yep. uh, that kind of organise and manage data uh, mm -hmm. in the digital space. And so he's actually paying for all of his clients' ad inventory uh, to use Adfin so that they have access to their d data should yep. they need it. And yep. so, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant uh, idea, I think, of Martin's, and that's been recognised by the industry. So. Uh, well done, Assembly. Yep, uh, and it's been a bad week for? Uh, it's somewhat the flip side of that coin. It's a bad week for Google. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it seems to be often a bad week for either Google or Facebook at the moment. They're under increasing pressure from kind of, you know, consumer attention, from the news media, from political, political sources and regulation. Um, this one uh, is related to Google's uh, what they call the Coalition for Better Ads. So if you remember, there's been lots of talk about how consumers don't like advertising, and so the industry should take that in hand. And Google was one of the founding members of this organization called the Coalition for Better Ads, and its ambition was to try and identify the ads that annoyed people, yeah. essentially. So, they, so the Coalition published some research last year which identified those most annoying formats, and uh, some people are saying, you know, unsurprisingly, it goes it treads pretty lightly on those formats which Google and other coalition members, yeah. such as Facebook and others, use predominantly. Uh, so the Wall Street Journal called it a self-serving recommendation. Turns out, then, an ad age investigation has revealed that the coalition's report was not written as a coalition. It was entirely authored by Google, mm. and the coalition removed Google's name from the authorship and the 18 people, the names of the 18 Google employees who wrote the recommendations. Uh, so there's kind of suggestions that this has been somewhat of a fix, mm. which is a shame yeah. because the ambition is to make advertising uh, a better and avoid ad blocking. Yeah, absolutely. And this comes at a time when Google are under scrutiny because they're launching their own ad blocker as well. Mm. So it's a bit of a kind of an own goal unnecessarily and just it just does not build trust yeah. uh, you know, in, these, in these suppliers. Last year, Mark Pritchard said the fox is guarding the hen house. Mm -hmm. The Guardian, uh, in their review of this story, said that now the fox is building a coalition around the hen house to guard it. And that's a pretty damning indictment, I think. Yeah. Right, question of the week. When it comes to media training, where are you? Now, next or future. Excellent. So that is your media training action plan for this week. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week. We might have to cut this. <laughs>